guys. Ah, there we go. Please remember to use your button when you talk. All right, hit the button. We have a public hearing today. And we don't have any vacancies, so we're set. You read the legal ad, Eunice. Uh, this is dated December 22nd, 2022. To the day, legal ad, the day paper in New London. Dear Matt, please publish the following public notice for two insertions, Friday, December 30th, 2022, and Friday, January 6th, 2023. Town of Groton, Inland Wetlands Agency, notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the Inland Wetlands Agency will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, January 11, 2023 at 7 p.m. in Community Room 2, Town Hall Annex 134, Groton Long Point Road, and virtually via the Zoom platform for the purpose of receiving comments on the following. Inland Wetlands Agency 22-090 Flanders Road, pin number 26091037839. Application is to pipe 175 linear feet of intermittent water course, construction of buildings, parking, and a retaining wall within the upland review area, and discharge of stormwater to wetlands. Activities associated with the construction of a contractor's garage, office building, hall development, applicant, Sisiski and Schaap. A Zoom meeting link will be posted to the town's website calendar or can be attended by visiting www.zoom.us. Have to read all those webinar numbers. Uh, da, 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 da. Just numbers of the Zoom link. Um, the applications are on file and available for public inspection during normal business hours at the planning department. On second insertion, please put dated this sixth day of January 2022 at Groton, Connecticut. David Scott, Chairman. Thank you, Eunice. Not that we have a lot of public here, but your information, I, we will uh, call for public comments after a bit. And uh, when you do, please uh, state your name and address and make your comments pertinent to wetlands, not traffic or things like that. Okay, so we're ready. I need to speak into the microphone. Can you use the microphone? Yeah. Mm. Uh, good evening. My name is Greg Fettis with Fettis Engineering, representing the the owner and applicant of uh, Zero Flanders Road, uh, which I know you're all familiar with. We had a site walk out there last year uh, in December, um, and uh, there's an existing, a, a big part of the application is the piping of uh, an intermittent water course. Uh, currently, there's a culvert uh, that comes from the uh, east side of Flanders Road and works its way underneath Flanders Road on a diagonal um, and then empties into a catch basin and then is piped for a short distance, 20-something uh, feet, I believe. Um, and we're looking to, I know the public, the legal notice said 170 and change. 75. Yeah, we did reduce that with the current um, current to about 130 total, so an additional 110 feet of piping. Um, and what we did after the meeting also, we, uh, and I'll go over in more detail, but we did, when we when we kind of walked down the intermittent stream, it, it did kind of widen out at a, at a kind of a distinct point. Um, so we did have, uh, David Lord, our soil scientist, to uh, re-flag some of that, um, and it does show now on the uh, on the site plan uh, as it widens and then widens further as it gets closer to, I would say, the kind of the base wetland. Um, can I so, just, can, I, can I just interrupt for a minute? <clears throat> Since this is a public hearing, um, I feel like you should probably be uh, presenting the application because. The public hasn't had a chance. They haven't had the benefit of seeing the application before and being on the site walk. 
Oh, I mean, yeah. you, yes, you I, I can absolutely do that. That'd be cool. Uh, but why don't I, well, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be a traditional presentation because, uh, but let me quickly go through the plan set that's before you tonight and the application. And then I'm going to swing back around to alternatives uh, because I think that may drive potentially some discussion and changes uh, potentially. Um, and I'm not 100 percent sure how much back and forth there'd be and how, how it's going to proceed from there. And I do, uh, David Lord was supposed to be here tonight. He had a conflict. Uh, so I, what I would respectfully request is that we keep public hearing open open for two weeks till the next meeting, and uh, he's he's locked in and penciled in on that end in on that date uh, for the twenty fifth. Uh, because he, you know, I think his his testimony regarding affecting any of the intermittent water courses is important. Um, but let me just go through the application. I'm sorry, I moved the drawings. Um, go through the application real quick. Again, I stated that it's on the west side of uh, uh, Flanders Road, just north of um, the transfer station, the Groton transfer station, and the Groton transfer station property uh, is to the south, and then it works its way uh, to the uh, west of the property also in question. Um, so this is just the cover sheet, uh, which basically has the, uh, the site plan. Um, and we did, uh, I'll just flip through the sheets, uh, the cover sheet, all the information on the cover sheet is repeated in more detail on the site plan, but this is the existing conditions plan. Um, there's two, uh, areas of wetlands, one to the to the, to the south and basically uh, covers the majority of east to west. Um, and that's located uh, right here, wetland flags one through 27. Um, and then to the uh, north, that could be the northwest corner is a wetland that, that drifts on to north to the uh, property to the north owned by Avery. Um, and that's wetland flag, I want to say 28 through, does go up to 42. And then there's the additional 100 flags that kind of widened uh, this area here, um, where, I don't know, I call it like a delta, where the intermittent water course starts to spread out um, and you get some uh, sediment movement and so forth uh, and kind of flattens out in that area. So the so the property and again this property, the drainage from the east comes across. Uh, there's a culvert, uh, similar development, uh, industrial buildings uh, located directly to the east and also to the north. There's some additional ones, um, but that there's a wetland here that's piped under the road and then uh, works its way across the property. Um, I want to believe at some point it also maybe came across uh, Flanders Road um, here to kind of develop this, but uh, that's just speculation. Um, and all of these wetlands kind of uh, get together down west of uh, west of the property. Um, but you can see we put on the 50 foot and the 100 foot regulated review uh, lines, and you can see kind of the only area. Uh, outside of the 100 foot regulated review line on the property is kind of this basically the center of the property. Um, that's a small area. Uh, it's only about, I would say, 40, 40 by 80 or so. And then there's a small area in the northeast corner. So that's, again, that's the existing conditions. Uh, so this is the site plan. We're proposing uh, two buildings. One's uh, 60 by 120. Um, 
and then a uh, 30 by 75, and that's a reduced uh, from the original 30 by 100, then it was reduced 30 to not 30 by 90, and furthermore, in the last revision to 30 by 75. Um, we also, uh, there's an entrance, uh, one two way entrance off of Flanders Road, just south of the Colbert Crossing. Um, and there's an existing encroachment driveway uh, located in the northeast corner of the property that actually serves the adjacent property. Which uh, one did you, excuse me, which one did you reduce 30 to 75? Yeah, so it's the small building to the uh, north and the north, uh, northeast corner. And what's the size of the other one then? The other one's 120 by 60. Oh, 120 by 60. So we also, you know, I don't know if you remember the original, and I'm going to show you kind of the progression of where we started and where, where we ended up and where maybe we're headed uh, with the development. Um, but again, just to go through uh, the application, I think we, uh, so it's a 60 by 120. It's, uh, it's a kind of a traditional uh, industrial type building, metal building. Uh, it would be 120, so there'd be six bays or so, 60 by 20. Um, the garage doors on both sides. Uh, so it's, Basically, like uh, you know, permitted uses in the zone. For example, like a like a like a landscape uh, contractor would be able to bring his all of his equipment in and leave it inside, um, and the potential to have uh, like a mezzanine office uh, or a small office on the on the on that level. Um, but it offers uh, the ability for for a contractor, painting contractor. Uh, any kind of contractor, building contractor, to be able to store his equipment inside um, out of the weather, uh, as well as have a place of, of business to his employees can be, and they can uh, leave uh, that area. Um, so we, again, uh, we had, uh, if you remember the original application, or the original drawings from the original application, we had a, a little bit further uh, an additional pavement of close to 12,000 square feet of additional pavement, which which basically gave us more parking and more maneuverability and more outside storage area. Um, kind of listening to the concerns of uh, staff and, and the commission on the sidewalk, we, we trimmed that up uh, quite a bit um, and eliminated about 12,000 square feet of uh, paving. Um, but again, the building to the northeast is 75 by 30. Um, that was trimmed down from the original was 100 by 30 and then 90 because we were too close for a setback issue on the, uh, on the northern property line. But we further reduced it to 75. But we're going to kind of talk about that. Uh, so the big picture stuff is that culvert that's kind of ends just over the property line uh, in this location here uh, would get replaced with a uh, approximately 130 feet of 24 inch pipe um, and end up uh, exiting into a plunge pool, which basically would control, uh, instead of it just kind of flowing, uh, free flowing, I guess, um, which is what's happening out there now. You get quite a bit of sediment movement, um, quite a bit of erosion. Um, I think we all witnessed that on site, um, but this would get piped. Uh, the actual intermittent stream would get piped and dump into a plunge pool. It would basically control, dissipate some of the energy, um, spread it out on a level spreader and uh, flow to the wetlands in a little bit more of a controlled manner, uh, reducing sediment movement and reducing erosion. Um, so that sediment movement and erosion ends up working its way down into the wetlands. Uh, so I think that's a positive. I understand that uh, piping intermittent water streams isn't high on the commission's uh, list of things to do. 
Um, and I'm going to circle back around when I talk about alternatives and why we're not, we're left with, uh, you know, we didn't need to be at 200 feet originally. We didn't need to be at 170 feet. We're now at 130. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to get it to limit it as much as possible. Um, and again, I'm going to circle back around when I talk about alternatives to try to reduce that even a little bit further. Um, so, uh, and again, um, we did try to keep the development 50 plus feet away from all of the wetlands, obviously with the exception of uh, the area where the intermittent water course is because that uh, we're basically uh, piping an intermittent water course. So we're right in there doing that. Um, but for the balance of it, uh, we are 50 plus feet away um, with the development, um, closer to 60, 65, 70. We're pushing in some areas. Um, so what we also did here was we, because we trimmed up the pavement and lost close to 12,000 square feet of pavement, we were able to bring the development. And if you're, everyone remembers that the, the topography out there is sloping there's a kind of a plateau and there's some some disturbance uh, mounds and excavations and so forth, but pretty much it's relatively a gentle slope and then it kind of gets a little bit steeper as it works its way towards the wetlands. So as we pulled away from the wetlands with reduction in pavement, we were able to reduce the height of the walls. Um, so originally we had a reinforced concrete wall uh, basically around the perimeter of the paving, um, which we were able to reduce that to a maximum height of about four and a half feet. Um, like originally, we were closer to six and a half, seven feet uh, with a reinforced concrete wall. So since we were able to reduce it, uh, we're going to utilize um, a stone masonry wall. Uh, so more of a natural wall on site, a rock for the most part. Um, and again, it's zero to four and a half feet max height. Um, and then what we also did was add a, so as we build that wall, we're gonna disturb a relatively small area towards the wetlands. We will replant that and we show a planting plan on there around the perimeter of um, native, uh, native material or native plantings. Um, have a plant list there uh, in the buffer area. Could you just point out that stone wall just on the plan? Yeah, so it's uh, it starts here okay. and runs basically all uh, around. So it's well, about zero feet here and zero feet here, and then yeah. the, the steepest, the, the highest part is about four and a half feet. Um, and what that does, I think there was some comments regarding uh, staff comments regarding bioretention and uh, less pavement and so forth. Um, we kind of did a different uh, tact on that. We basically we didn't think it was a right uh, the use industrial zone. It was the right use to have uh, necessarily um, pervious pavers or other options. So we chose to pave it, um, all the parking area and all the aisleways, and then capture and treat um, with hydrodynamic separators and then put some of it back into the ground after it's treated on the, on the upper side. Um, so we, you know, another tack might've been to uh, send everything like kind of a, away from the building, do bioretention around uh, or pervious and and get the water pre-treat or untreated maybe into the ground or into the bioretention. I think in, in this case, my preference is to treat it all. Uh, we do have two hydrodynamic separators uh, treating the water prior to putting it into the ground. So it is 
I think I, I, from my professional engineering uh, best management practices, I think it's a better way to go uh, in this case. Um, typically, even in parking areas for a shopping center or something like that, you don't like to, to send pavement into the ground without it being treated. Um, How, what's the size of that area where it's piped? I mean, the width. What size pipe and how big are you going to? So it's a 24 inch pipe is what's coming out of there now. Um, I know there was a, a letter, which I will get to, that was submitted um, from the neighbor to the east, I think 800 Flanders, about sizing and so forth. But I'll, I'll address that after. But there's a 24 inch, she's talking about friction loss and so forth. Um, I don't think it's an issue, but to upsize it to 30 inch would not be it's no difference in uh, cost or or anything. So she's worried about the 24 inch pipe that we're extending. And we're actually only extending it about 100, 100 feet now versus the original 170 or 100 or 200 originally, I think, is when we first uh, took a crack at this. Um, but she's worried about it not handling the flows currently that are going through there. The, and again, I didn't look back at the original approvals for across the street, but there was maybe some concern that the pipe that's there now wasn't large enough. And I guess they've been monitoring it. And maybe staff can comment after about it, but uh, I, uh, I, I, yes. So now, now I've heard like the pipe I read 175 because that was something on this paper. Yes. Um, and then earlier you said it's going to be 130 feet, and then now you just said 100 feet. Well, there's 20. There's 20. The only reason I say 130 is because there was 20 plus feet of pipe that's already there that we're replacing. Oh, so you're going to replace that? We're replacing it. Oh, I see. I see. So there's already. Um, there's a catch basin located right here, and then there's about, I want to see, give you the exact number here. Um, instead of trying to tie into its 25, 26 feet that's there now, so that's where the 130 minus 26 was 104 okay. additional, but we're actually replacing 26, so it's, one, yeah. it's 130 total. Um, road. And it doesn't, it just doesn't make sense to, to not replace the catch base and put it, make sure there's a sump in there and make sure that it's functioning correctly and uh, to tie into an existing pipe that's I'm not sure how old it is, but this doesn't make sense to try to tie into it, just replace with new and that way uh, there's no concerns about, typically there's a problem when there's a problem with piping and trying to tie new to old is where you have a problem. Oh. I thought the issue that was being raised was clogging, the piping getting clogged. And so given the extended nature of the what you're proposing, how would you prevent that? But I thought that was the issue. And, uh, so the clogging, well, I moving we can read through the letter. The letter gets read into the thing, and I can address it specifically. But the clogging typically wouldn't be on the the down gradient side, the down gradient side, the clogging would be on the up gradient side where you have um, this, this pipe here. I mean, we don't have all that information on here. We just have the the existing catch basin on the other side of the road yeah. and then the piping as it's heading off. But that you're going to get the clogging where water is enter, entering the pipe versus where it's exiting. Once it gets in, it's unless it gets jammed up with stuff, it, but it's generally going to clog in the in the entrance. Um, but again, if that's if that's a concern, again, I, you know, we would agree, and before the next meeting, I would look a little closer at that, and if we had to upsize it to thirty inch or thirty six inch, it's not, again not a not a big deal. But we're going to again circle back around to with the alternative discussion to try to further reduce the length of the piping, um, hopefully to, to address some of staff's concerns. And I know the commission is 
also concerned about that. I'd like to come back to this piping issue in a minute. Yes, sir. <laughs> but I'd like to go backwards uh, with respect to how you're dealing with the runoff on this site. And uh, I, I was very confused. You're not putting permeable pavement in, are you? No. No. So, so, and the runoff is going where? Can you point out to me? Yeah. So I'm going to get to the next sheet. This is the site plan. The next sheet is the grading and drainage plan. Okay. So I, you can then let's go back to the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. So now you have this hundred, hundred plus. Okay, length of pipe. All right. Yes, sir. Let's assume for a moment that material is getting into the catch basin and moving down this pipe. So, so uh, do you have access points on the site to to get in there to clean it or whatever to monitor it, it being clogged or whatever? Yes. So. There's a new catch basin being installed here. That's a would be an X. Uh, sorry, right on our side of the road. That would be an access point. And then at the end, there's uh, where where it enters the plunge pool. There's actually going to be three. And again, circling back around after the alternative, there's there's currently three flared end units um, coming into this plunge pool. One one the middle one is is taking. That existing flow from this catch basin. So there'll be uh, an access point at this catch basin and also an access point at the plunge pool. Uh, and there'll be 100 feet of pipe, 130 feet of pipe that's straight, um, um, constant slope. So you could easily um, get to it from both ends. Um, but again, I think on the other side of the street, that side I can't really control, nor that I think that this property owner would be responsible for the other side of the street. But again, in my professional opinion, the most likely clogging is going to occur on the west side, where the water is entering from a wetland. And if we can we'll get to that letter from the neighbor, and we can discuss it further. And I, again, if there's something I'm not sure what we can do on the other side of the street, but um, so I think that's the the site plan. Uh, I'm gonna flip to the grading and drainage plan. Uh, uh, so what we tried to do here was come off of Flanders Road, come down as much as we can, that's a reasonable grade to get the site low enough, as low as possible, to limit the height of the walls uh, going around the site. And I think we were successful in doing that. Um, the walls, the stone walls around the site are, stone retaining walls are four and a half feet max, which again is, you know, not a, not a tall wall for a retaining wall. Um, and then, so how we control the stormwater here. So there's on the site, uh, what we what we have to do is reduce the volume and the rate of flow that's uh, proposed to match, to be equal to or less than what's existing. So there's two, there's two areas, uh, two drainage analysis points. One is the south side which goes to this wetland and then the north side, which goes to this wetland in this corner. So um, all of this is not changing. That's existing. We're not getting anywhere near, uh, well, I shouldn't say anywhere near. We're, we're 50 plus feet away with the south side of the development. Uh, from this wetland, but none of this is is being disturbed at all. So all of that existing flow that's currently coming into here is remaining um, and actually uh, about half of the this area existing flows that way. So since we're developing the site now, uh, we are capturing uh, all of this pavement uh, on the south side of the building and the west side of the building, uh, we're treating it and then we're putting it underground and then we're controlling how it 
leaves uh, this underground infiltration area with a control structure. Basically, uh, so there's underground storage and then there's a control structure that limits the amount of water and the rate it leaves uh, that storage area. And that allows us to reduce the flow uh, into the plunge pool and control it. Uh, and then a little bit of uh, the roof runoff is, is running uh, this way. This is all in the calculation. So we did reduce. Which way is uh, the roof runoff running? Uh, that, so the roof that... runoff is running to. I'm going to get to a detail of the stone wall. There's basically a drainage system behind the stone stone wall, which is typical in a retaining wall. It's basically crushed stone behind the retaining wall that allows. Uh, typically, walls fail when. Um, there's hydraulic pressure against the wall and pushes it over. So what we do as engineers is, is create a drainage system behind the wall that allows water to kind of seep or run out um, at the bottom of the wall. So that's in place in the wall. So the, the piping uh, for the building will run into that drainage system, which is basically a four inch under drain pipe that runs parallel to the wall. Uh, roof runoff will run into that. It'll be in crushed stone and it'll kind of seep out. Uh, there's also be some weep holes uh, throughout the wall in case it does start to fill up, but it basically is returning it back to kind of where it goes today. Can you just be a little more detailed about that? So is there, where are you catching the roof runoff? So it's uh, leader, uh, so there's gutters. Yeah. Uh, that would run down gotcha. uh, typically at the corner of the buildings. Yeah. And then um, what? And, and then, then it they, happens. And they get piped to this corner. Yeah. And then they get piped to the wall. So it's still a point source. No, no, no. So it goes to a drain. Crushed uh, down. Yeah. Drain. So here's the pipe behind the wall. Here's the roof runoff coming into it. It's piped into that. Okay. And then it, this is a perforated pipe. So there's a perforated pipe in the crushed stone. In the crushed stone. Oh, that's what. So then it, and I, there's a detail that <clears throat> might help when I get to that sheet. Good. Um, <clears throat> so that kind of, and, and it, the idea is just to spread, spread the, 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 the water out. Um, so again, uh, there's, there's a high point at the front of the building here. So kind of all the water uh, goes south from that point or north from that point. Uh, this, the, the water that runs around here gets captured in this catch basin, uh, flows to a storm manhole, another catch basin here, which captures basically all the parking lot and aisleway water from uh, halfway across the front of the building on the west side or east side, sorry, uh, the south side, and then the west side. Uh, that sends it to the catch basin here, and then here's the hydrodynamic separator number one. So then it gets treated, and then it goes into the underground infiltration area. And then from there, it's, there's a control structure, uh, proposed outlet structure number one with concrete weir. And that controls basically. There's a small, I'm not sure, uh, let's say it on here, a four inch orifice. So, a four inch pipe leaving that. But basically, the water is filling up inside the underground storage, and it's only allowed to go out of a four inch hole as it fills up. At some point, a hundred year storm, it flows over, over the top of a concrete weir, but it's all calculated and controlled uh, so we don't increase the flows. So that's kind of the, I guess, the south side of the development. And then the pipe, you can see the pipe from the new catch basin entering. That's, that's basically not changing any of the, it's taking less of the flow 
because it's only taking flow from across uh, the culvert, the water that currently flows into that intermittent water stream is getting captured and treated prior to, to kind of getting into that same area. Could you just elaborate on the treatment? So it's a hydrodynamic separator, which basically separates uh, sediment as well as uh, floatables, oils, and uh, any kind of floatables. And then it's just it's a matter of uh, maintaining uh, those, and, and there's maintenance schedules on the plans uh, for that. But basically, it gets treated in that manner, and then from there, prior to going underground, it gets treated. And then there's a little bit of treatment in the underground storage. You try not to send parking lot or, or parking areas directly into the underground, but this is treated and then goes in there. So there's some amount of treatment there. There's an isolator row in the infiltration of uh, galleries. Basically, it's a uh, one of the rows, and I think they're shaded on here, uh, right here. So. That's the first row it enters, and then there's a, a well, like a silt fence material on the bottom of that. So any kind of sediment would, and it, it's accessible, so it can be cleaned. Um, and then it would fill up that first row, and then it's all crushed stone and perforated uh, infiltration units. So it fills up that first row, and as it's filling up, it seeps over to the second, third, and fourth row. I had a curiosity. How, how does this system handle salt? Like, if you're going to salt your parking lot? It, it doesn't necessarily handle salt. So either there's no, you know, just use sand. It handles sand. It just sand, handles salt. Sand you can do. Yeah, because salt dissolves. You mentioned something about oil. Yes. Does it filter? How does it filter oil? Uh, so the, the infiltration doesn't. The hydrodynamic separator does. There's a uh, the way it enters. Uh, there's a chamber that the the to simplify it. There's like a like a hood system. So anything it has to to get below. A certain, like the stuff that the floatables oils would be on top of the water. So, if, if, for example, if you look at a catch basin with a hood, the the bottom of the hood is is where the non floatables would be, and they would work their way up and go out. So it's a similar kind of um, setup in the hydrodynamic separator, where there's the way it's designed, uh, it separates out the floatables. So they would go out where they get stored so that's what the key to maintenance is or if you know you have a like an oil diaper like, or something it's not a diaper it's just it's a storage a certain volume of storage area so if you know you have a spill like if you spilled a five gallon thing of diesel oil and it got to this hydrodynamic separator you then have to deal with it right away if you uh just the normal drippings from a from a vehicle there's a there's a certain maintenance schedule for that like you don't if you know you have a spill you would want to deal with it if you otherwise you would just do it periodically and i i can get to that sheet i'm not sure i think it's either <coughs> quarterly or twice a year where these things get uh, maintained Uh, so similarly on the north side, um, well, it's a little bit different. This building, um, the, the pavement goes to a grass filter strip and then into an infiltration trench, and then it go, then it gets piped to a hydrodynamic separator, and then it just make sure it goes back. Um, Yeah, this one's a little bit different. This one is uh, the building goes to the underground infiltration, which is which is acceptable. Roof water is typically clean, 
uh, that can go right into the underground. And then in this case, uh, the pavement goes to the grass filter strip into an underground infiltration strip in that same four inch uh, appropriated pipe is in that. It's piped to a catch basin that gets piped to a hydrodynamic separator prior to being discharged. Um, so I think there's a small infiltration uh, gallery there after the uh, hydrodynamic separator, and then that gets piped into that same plunge pool. So again, all this is outlined in the, uh, the stormwater calculations. Two through 100 year storms are all reduced um, rate and volume. Um, we treated the water quality, quality volume and, and rate and all that. So it's, uh, you know, to be basically every, almost every drop of water with the exception of maybe the, some of the roof water is treated. Uh, all the parking lots are treated prior to being discharged. Um, and again, we reduced reduced volumes and rates. Uh, so actually, here's the uh, the the wall detail. You can see the crushed stone behind. Uh, you can see there's a pipe looking at it this way, and then the the drains twenty foot on center, leaving um, leaving the pipe there. But a lot of the The only time it gets captured is when this fills up to a certain point and then it'll drain out. So there's a deep <coughs> bunch of pool on here also. And we put a level spreader at the end of the plunge pool to kind of help spread out the flows, reduce the uh, the point flows energy. Yeah. Well, to reduce the energy when it drops into the plunge pool, and then also to instead of your point flow source, it, that level spreader is perfectly level in theory, and it flows over the you know. erosion and sediment control basically. Hay bales and silt fence all the way around the site. Um, uh, wood chips will be stored and utilized if necessary to help, um, uh, if necessary. Um, there's some notes and that deal with that, but uh, I think all the kind of the standard uh, land disturbance, construction sequence stuff that. Uh, but again, it's uh, it's a it's the development itself is going to be a relatively flat site once you get down off the road, um, and that wall going around. Basically, there's not really any slopes that are concerning. They're not. There's no like three to one grading, very limited uh, grade changes on on site and outside the wall area. The wall, you know, we showed a five, I think a five foot planting buffer. You know, that's that's really all the disturbance that there's going to be um, in order to get that wall in. And then we'll plant that five foot disturbed area. The wall will be up and then everything is contained landward of the wetlands. We can swing back to any of this stuff after. Uh, uh, site uses city water. There's, there's, uh, there's a well. There's a well on yeah. site. Where's the well on site? Uh, Is the well already there? No. Nope. Uh, we're proposing a well. And again, it's a very limited. The well is located uh, back here. There's a couple, I don't know if you can see that or not. The wells here, uh, very small septic system to the south um, in an area where there's, you know, limited, uh, limited cuts or fills. Can you just go over one and what, what do you anticipate this building to be used for? 
the main, uh, the main typically building? like a contractor, whether it's a, a general contractor, building contractor, a site contractor, a landscape contractor, paint, paint uh, probably like a painter, but there won't be painting on site. It'll just be a, a you know painter that has. I hate to see them wash their paintbrushes on the site. The uh, that's so it's like a garage. Yeah. It's like a garage. It's like a storage facility. But uh, we, yeah. Vehicles and equipment. And uh, but but it's basically individual garages that will be rented out, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's a detail of the vegetated uh, that's the building to the north east side vegetated strip and a similar kind of setup with that uh, infiltration trench. Basically, the water is going to flow from the building across the pavement, be filtered a little bit through the grass strip, end up in the crushed stone, ultimately end up in the pipe. And we didn't really take into account any infiltration into the ground so it's all if we do get any of that it'll just be kind of a bonus um but our calculations uh basically we just slowed everything down to a rate uh that met the pre-existing conditions um, so these are just details for uh, the underground infiltration Uh, some tracking pad. I'm not sure why they didn't end up on the uh, roof and control plan, uh, but the stockpile and then the catch basin, um, flared end unit, dumpster, uh, and the silt sacks will go into the catch basins uh, to capture any silt that's dropping in during construction. So I think uh, just so a couple things were submitted. I don't know that I need to go through and we'll talk about alternatives next because I think it's important. I think uh, there's a soil scientist and I'm kind of leave that for next two weeks from now when David's here uh, to address that. Um, and then a response letter to staff comments, which again, I can go through, but I think it's more important to maybe spend some time on alternatives first. Uh, so I made a list of the alternatives and we submitted uh, this to uh, staff. I guess it was just a couple of days ago. Um, but so we did, and so I, I, I developed this list and then when I dropped the stuff off, you know, staff kind of reiterated the fact that we should be really looking hard at uh, alternatives and try to help you understand how we got to where we are with the development and um, whether or not there's room for maybe a little modification in order to balance. Um, they didn't say all this. I'm, I read into a little bit of what they said, but they said, they basically said, present alternatives. <laughs> and I said, yes, okay. And I probably fought them a little bit over the last couple months uh, to do that. Um, Cause I think it just happens naturally as we go through the process. Uh, but and, and I'm trying to balance for my client, a development that makes sense financially and in, in balances the disturbance to wetlands or wetland buffers and so forth. So um, anyway, so I, mean, I, I first made this list and, I, and I'm just gonna go through the seven things I wrote down here and then I'm gonna kind of go through the progression of how we got to where we are. Uh, so we did uh, alternative one, we had a larger building number two, which we reduced from 100 feet by 30 feet to 75 by 30. So that was a, a reduction. I have an extra copy of this if someone wants it. Um, 
And why, so, why did you reduce the building? Uh, well, we first reduced it by 10 feet because we were too close to the side yard setback. And then, you know, I kind of thought about, you know, we were a little bit closer to the, to the wetland on that. I guess it would be the south end of that building too. Uh, so, you know, it's just a little bit further reduction. Um, so the pavement we reduced by from our original eleven, we reduced it by almost twelve thousand square feet, which sounds like a lot. Um, but we we you know, in looking back on it, we 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 had a lot of extra room um, for whether it's outside storage or maneuverability. Uh, you know, there's potentially. You know, a landscaper has a, a van with a, or a truck with a trailer on it. And, you know, just so anyway, we reduced it to 11,000 by 11,746 square feet. Uh, so the original piping of the stream and this, this, a little bit of this happened after our site walk. You know, we looked at where it widened and we had things re reflagged a little bit and widened it and so forth. Um, so we reduced it from 204 feet originally uh, to 130. And I think the, the 170 probably was a, the additional to what's there now, um, approximately. Um, so we also looked at piping, if you remember, uh, I'm just gonna flip this on here. Can I? So we also looked at piping from where it crosses and piping it to the south to this wetland, which I guess could have happened whenever they put that pipe under the road. And and you know, I think on the surface, maybe, hey, maybe that's a good idea. Then it then it eliminates the flow in that intermittent stream. And but now you're changing where a lot of water is going. And I'm not sure that there'd be a lot of analysis and so forth. And staff might not be on board with it. But we did look at it. We said, all right, well, let's send all the water coming across to the southern wetland where we're not. You know, we're not doing anything. We're not, we're limiting our activities to that area. Uh, so that was kind of number four on our alternatives considered. Uh, I think we originally had buildings that were further from the road. Um, and again, this is another uh, thing we looked at is, is moving them closer to the road. There's 30 foot front yard setback. Um, you know, I think we were considerably more than that with the building, uh, the originally with the building. Uh, so you move it closer to the road in theory, you're, you're pulling away from the wetlands. Um, however, you can see on here that 100 foot regulated outside the 100 foot regulated review line is the only one we have on the site with the exception of the northeast corner is is there. So um but we did look at that we looked at the building rotation you know i think comments when we were out there originally looking at this with with the commission is well why don't you put the building kind of there right on the 100 foot regular and it it doesn't we looked at we looked at you know rotating at 90 degrees everything between zero and 90 and it it just this to what uh, to us made the most sense and the least disturbance to uh, to the wetlands uh, regulator review area. Uh, so we also had taller retaining walls with reinforced concrete material. We we you know were able to shorten the height of the walls and, and change to a more natural um, more ma more natural material, which I think is beneficial and. and Numerous ways. It's not a straight face. It's it's a it's a rocky. It's, a, it, it's stones. 
so you, there's little crevices, there's, you know, areas for animals, there's, you know, opportunity for veg vegetative growth on the wall, whereas a straight concrete wall, there isn't. Uh, so after I did that, and then I dropped off everything to staff, you know, they kind of reiterated to, to me about alternatives and that I really need to, to kind of help everyone understand how we got to where we are. So I did this little drawing before you um, colored the wetlands and said, all right, you know, I think originally we, we said, all right, we'll just do one, we just want to do one building. We don't want to do two buildings. And then we, maybe we wanted to do a bigger building originally. So we started with, you know, we started with the one building. And then we're like, oh, well, you know, we kind of didn't think originally when we first did the development, we first started that this was even wet on this side. And we were not shocked, but we were, I guess, probably disappointed that there was a wetland on that side. So then we're like, all right, well, we only have this area. Then this, the culvert's coming on an angle. So, you know, it'd be nice if it was kind of more perpendicular, you know, one way or the other. Um, but it wasn't. It was coming on an angle. It created that intermittent stream on an angle. And so, you know, we looked at this and we said, all right, well, how are we going to, how are we going to develop this site at all with that, with the way things are kind of put, put or the way things are, I guess, the wetland to the south, the wetland to the north, that intermittent stream and the catch basin and the piping coming across. So we said, all right, well, you know, our, for our first take was let's just pipe, just pipe the section that, or continue the pipe that was already put in. They, they added that pipe to get outside of the property line, I guess, back in the day, um, and then just let it go. Um, so that's where we started. And then we're like, well, there's, uh, you know, this was eliminated. We got, we got an area to the Northeast. Let's try to put a building in there. So that's kind of how we got to where we are when we first submitted. Um, and this, this, Sketches on the plan, the site plan revision two, uh, which is the one I just presented. Um, so then, you know, again, I said we looked at typing this to the south. That maybe that would that would help get rid of the intermittent stream. I don't know how that would, you know, it just seemed more complicated. Um, so then we looked at, well, so then I think staff mentioned a couple of times, did you look at getting rid of building two? And building two came about probably because we thought we were gonna get a bigger building here and we had more area to work with and we didn't. So we added building two and we, you know, we're gonna pipe it and that kind of got us around that. So, so So the red that I kind of outlined here is, all right, you know, what can we do that's kind of the minimum, get rid of building two, what's the best way to handle the intermittent stream? Can we shorten it any which way? And that's how we ended up with basically the red that you see there. Mm -hmm. So we would replace this catch base and we would pipe it over to a, storm manhole and then try to kind of get it back to to where it is you know again i didn't spend a ton of time perfecting this uh but we did you know look at get getting rid of building two and piping this over uh there'd be you know the similar wall tuck things in a little bit tighter here um you know a lot of the same uh, that you saw that I that I that I presented, uh, just a, again a little bit. Uh, you could see the red pulled in just a little bit. So we're getting, 
you know, somewhere closer to six, probably 65 feet, 60 feet. You know, here we're, we're pulling away uh, 75, 80 feet away. Um, but we're still, we're, we're, I want to say we're stuck with that. What was the cards that were dealt to us by, I don't think it was this property owner. I think at some point when they did Flanders Road, they put a culvert under it. And they took all that water and they, you know, decided to pipe it only a certain distance. And so that's, you know, at some point it must have, water must have been coming across over here too, I would think, and here. But this, the cards we were dealt and we're trying to balance what, uh, whether it's a buildable lot or not, I guess, at the end of the day, uh, we've been taxed on it as a buildable lot, I guess, or the owner has been uh, for a number of years. And I'm not sure how that weighs in, but uh, at some point, you know, getting rid of building two, you know, we need to, we need to pipe it a little bit. Maybe we can pipe it less than what we were showing um, and get rid of building two, but we're, you know, we're, here we are. And I thought, you know, we, there was a progression, you know, I brought all the, you know, this was kind of our original uh, concept plan. And you can see we had bigger numbers, 55 feet. We were over the 50 foot setback or 50 foot regulated review line. We had much more in this area. Uh, here was the 30 by 100 building. You know, that we, I think that was a more developed uh, site plan. I think it's close to the original plan we submitted. Um, and then we started to start to peel things back uh, to where we are today, which is what I presented, which is one more revision to what that one is. Uh, but that's how we kind of got to where we are. Um, you know, we would be, sorry about that. Uh, we would be, you know, do we want to get rid of building two? We we did talk to the neighbor to the north, um, which would help potentially this, this side of the development because uh, we could shift kind of everything a little bit that way, eliminate some of these, you know, we talked about purchasing the property um, and we just, uh, we're not there yet. I don't know if we'll ever be there, but we did explore that. Um, but it would help this, this situation. And maybe that's what we have to do is wait a little bit, see if we can work something out with the neighbor in order to fully develop, fully develop what we think fully develop. Um, I'm guessing a little bit different than your fully developed site, but um, anyway, again, it's a balance, uh, and we're trying to to figure out something that works in this situation. And is Sorry. building two going to be used for the same? Uh, I think that's one of the activities. A little bit. One? It's a. It's more of a like a garage. Um, garage units versus. Uh, As it hires people, it doesn't look like there's a lot of. How are people going to get into that garage? Like well, there is the garage there is doors up there on the sides. So there'd be again, I drew it. Let me get back to what, what I submitted. It's a big metal thing like Johnson's. I, was, oh, I know what it is. I just have seen uh, a driveway. Oh, <laughs> find a place to turn your car to turn. Oops. <laughs> So there is 35 feet. Okay. Um, so you would basically come in um, all the Flanders, you'd come across the front, and then there's adequate room to make a maneuver into garage doors that are facing that way. Um, is the corner of that building in the wetlands, that wetland pocket back there? Uh, the corner of this building? Yeah. The, the no, side. so the wetlands are all... But there's uh, a pocket in that corner close to the road, isn't there? Uh, no. Wetlands? No. Oh, I thought you pointed that out in your plan. 
think I just pointed out maybe, but that was one of the only hundred foot. Oh, maybe. Uh, yeah. So um, oh, okay. this this corner, which again we're we're forced to put yeah. it back because of yeah. guard setback stuff, but um, but that's the existing conditions. So they're in their you know the wetlands are carried out through carried through on the same they're the same on all the drawings. So. Um, so anyway, that's where we, hmm. you know, you know, we want to be responsible uh, developers, builders, um, and respect uh, setbacks. But there's a, there's again, you know, there's a balance to to getting. It's a difficult site. It's it's a challenging site. Yeah. Yes. Um, and one of the things that concerns me is kind of a big picture thing is just the sheer amount of engineering that's required in order to do, to do the development that you want to do and and you know you know you're an engineer so you trust in these systems and so forth but it just seems to me like so much engineering for such a a small you've got that long you know all of it everything everything seems to be piped and well, the way in the, today's regulations, they require, and pretty much all the towns are the same. It's state driven, where you're treating, um, you, you basically want to treat the first flush of, of, of water. So you, you have to deal with that. And then you also have to, to reduce, you know, you're taking a raw site and you're. Re, you, yeah, that, I understand that yeah. part. But, but, um, let me take it from a little different direction. Um, so the other thing that I look at, and maybe you you have a percentage of this, when you look at the upland review area and, and also including the wetlands themselves, you know, you're you're talking about very small kind of area. And I just wondered if there you had a percentage of the amount of impermeable um, surfaces within that buffer area. How much impermeable to, you know, what's left basically natural? Otherwise, it looks like it's, um, does that a figure you have? I mean, I just like to get a feeling for that because it just seems like a lot of, which is why you would need a yeah. lot of engineering, right? Yeah, so I think, you know, I know I have it right on my yeah. phone because I was, Doing one of the yeah. calculations. Yeah. Oh, okay. So today. think about that, and then so that would also then mean that, you know, to what degree do these parking places conform to the town's requirement for this particular use, which is not where people are going to be parked there all day, or you know, all the parking places are going to be. Is this is this the minimum amount of parking places, or it's probably just because they need entrance to the garages because they're take they're driving things in. Oh, yes, no, so no. we configured all of our parking to be in front of the units. Yes. So originally. Um, well, anyway, don't let me yeah, distract you. Originally, we had additional out, outer parking areas. Yeah, um, yeah okay, in the original, yeah. Staff's, staff early comments was, and I think that, you know, was, are you overparked? Are your aisleways too much? Are your yeah. you know, and that's really when we, that's when we really took a hard look at um, reducing the pavement. Yeah. And and did you do that in the back of the building there too, where it looks like in a, a we did. Bit, a bit of a wider area? Like I'm wondering what what that's about, you know, up to the stone wall, or that maybe you shrunk that from here to yeah. So this was this was. One of the originals, so we had 55 feet, and we had um, so we had 18 Some, parking spaces yeah. plus a 30 plus uh, aisle way, right? Just for maneuverability, right? Um, and similarly, 55 feet here, and you know this was all paved previously, and, yeah, we, not, and we yeah we trimmed that up considerably. Um, and again, you know we this is a tough site, and we you know. Squeeze. Progressive. Well, we 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 
tried to balance the best we could yeah. something that's going to work. You know, I hate to use the word financially, but if it, if you can't, you know, you can't put a two car garage on this site and be like, oh, all right, we're we're not, you know, okay. it's just not a, it's an yeah. industrial zone. It's, you know, yeah. it's, so it's, so it's balancing all of the, your concerns and, yeah. and you know, that's why we're talking. staff's concerns yeah. and that's why we're, you know, and I, yeah. So anyway, that would be a, a thing I could be kind of interested in, the percentage of impermeable. Yeah, I would. I thought I had it. It was another right. project that I was time. working on. But be a yeah, so I will really okay. like hone in on that because I think in this case, our numbers are not high for, for impervious yeah. compared to the whole site in this kind of zone. Um, but yeah, and again, that's that's a balance between. I guess if there were no wetlands on this site, our impervious numbers would be, you know, way higher. Of course. Um, but so it's again, it's a balance. So and I can have those numbers for you. Yeah, next that time. would be great. And the other thing is, if you have some figures or uh, about how uh, you know this proposal to do this piping on you know, uh, with a twenty-four inch pipe and. In, I think in the letter he talked about 30 inch pipe and I'm sure you have some figures about that um, and, yeah, I will and, and 100 or 200 year storms or whatever the amount of velocity versus the length of the pipe and so on and so forth and you know we're not loving that pipe. I, I know. Yeah. And I will look at the, the 800, I think it's 800 Flanders. Oh, okay. I'm, Across. They had a few there was a claim in the letter that they had to do certain calculations. So I'm yeah. using their storm water. Yeah, that, 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 that would be helpful. So if we look at that, then I can understand what's coming through. They've also said they confirmed flows and so forth over the years. Uh, but we, we can look at that and, again, put a 24-inch pipe or 30-inch pipe. I mean, you don't want to oversize it just to oversize it, but... I mean, it's still being controlled well, on the other end. A lot of unknowns here. In the well, it's still being controlled. The only water coming into that pipe is from that development. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. but if the friction does, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll have that. Thank you. Well, we're on the pipe. I have a question. <clears throat> if building two were not built and you did your little move the catchment basin north, would that uh, decrease the length that you're trying to pipe totally oblivious? I don't think so. Oblivious yes. the need to pipe? Well, so we would still need to pipe it because um, we, we could, it, again, it's a balance of trying to equalize and again, I think the red is now the bare minimum statement. I'm not in love with it, but it, mm -hmm. I, I think I can talk my client into it. And and but we could shift everything. The more we shift it to the south, the less we would have to pipe. Mm -hmm. However, I think it's a good balance where it is. And this this red here would pull this plunge pool back to basically that. So we, I don't know what that number is. So was, did you answer my question or? I think we would reduce the piping by approximately 30 to 40 more feet. If we could, if we get rid of building two. Hmm. What if the uh, waterway was put in a stone channel and left open on the top, but with a, some sort of grate that cars could drive over? would still be open. But if they don't have building two, they don't need to have cars drive over it. Oh, that's right. But would anything be gained by at least having it open to air? Yeah, yeah, that's the whole that's the whole gist of the conversation is to we're moving towards no pipe or really short pipe. Shortest mm -hmm. possible pipe. I mean, we also, Sorry, Annie, I didn't mean to take your thing, but they were on the pipe, so I had to. Hey, I had to I'm it. It. <laughs> we also, I mean, we could, and I briefly looked at it, put it out there. 
is to eliminate the circulation all the way around the building. And I just don't think that's a good idea from a numerous stand, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to get rid of this, you know. Does the fire department have some regulations? Well, they would probably want us to see, <clears throat> you know, we haven't run it by them yet. Typically at site plan, we would do that. Um, but typically you want circulation around the building. Otherwise you're dead ending it and it's just gonna cause problems. And again, I, and I'm looking forward to David testifying about that intermittent portion mm -hmm. that's to the further north or further west and where it starts to flare out. And the flare out is actually down, you know, uh, past even where we have the current plunge pool. So if we can move it back another 30 or 40 feet. I mean, I don't I don't know that you want to return flow once we kind of slow it down and dissipate it a little bit back into a narrow channel. Um, but we can we can talk about that. Can you correct me if I'm wrong, just so I understand this? And I'm trying to understand the objection to the pipe. As far as I can ascertain, the water that's currently draining out of the, the other side of the street is the same water that's going to be draining through this pipe. No addition, your site is not going to add any additional water to that pipe. Am I right or wrong? That's correct. Yeah. So so it's uh, it, all it is is a, so it's still going to where it was going before. Okay. And uh so, so I don't, what is additional the water is being put into that? The way it gets there is additional water is being no, put into that other. Yes, we do have two other pipes going into there, but it's not a additional, meaning more rate and more volume. That's not happening compared to what's currently getting to that point. So the water off that site is not draining into the into that. Is it, it is, but it's being Some controlled is. by control structures on <clears throat> in both sides of the development. This side is being dealt, the north side is being dealt with a with its own kind of drainage system. If building two go ah. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, building two goes away, <laughs> that drainage system goes right. away, and all of this yes. continues to flow as it flows today. Uh, right. The drainage system to uh, the south of the pipe. Uh, some of it drains uh, to the plunge pool, and some of it drains uh, as it does today to the to the south to that wetland. But it doesn't. It's not increased. There's not more flow. Right. There's not a faster flow. There's not more volume. It's all controlled by the underground infiltration as well as control structures. Um, All right. If you eliminated building two, how much further back did yeah. you move the pipe? Well, I think it's about 35 feet. That needs to be for the next time. I would I would definitely suggest. That's what you already show, said. But showing that if story. you eliminated that road going there. Okay. Well, we'd be eliminating the road. So I, I mean, I, again, didn't look at it not back of the napkin. I spent some time on this, um, but this is what I came up with when I, so it's, uh, you know, I'd say it's, you know, it's about 40 feet. We'd, so we'd be down and it, it wouldn't be a straight shot, mm -hmm. which might be okay because it's gonna slow the water down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so instead of being a straight shot down at a pretty steep, I mean, we were all out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was challenging to, to walk it. Um, so it's going to be a longer run, which is going to flatten the slope a little bit and therefore slow the flow down a little mm -hmm. bit. Which you, is you didn't answer my question. If you eliminate building two and the road going to it, how much further back? 40 feet. You had 40 feet before. 40 more feet. 40 beyond that. Well, we, that's 80 feet. Uh, from not from the current proposal. <laughs> so this is the current proposal that you see. Yeah. Uh, that's where the plunge pool is. This is where I where I show it when we eliminate the road going across. So the red is the edge of pavement. 
and I basically pipe oh, that is around that is eliminating that route. That's mm -hmm. correct. And I, I'll look at it closer before the next meeting. Um, but I think you know it's it it's it's a longer well, understood. Yeah, the pipe runs should a make it a longer name. just because yeah. it's it's not a straight line. Yeah. Go ahead, Annie. You ask your question. I have two more questions. Um, I it's probably moot because my question was. Are there bay doors on the west side of the building? West but side. You said that you need to get you need traffic to go all the way around. So I was just trying to pull it back from the the west side is this yeah. Yes, there are bay there doors. There may be bay doors there. They're not critical. Um, the typical in this case, the, the bays. So it only be beneficial to the end unit. Um, so there wouldn't be bay doors on the, on the east side, on the west side, if probably not. So could we, but we also have our trash enclosure back there. So we need a little bit of maneuverability mm -hmm. and we've, you know, one of the, uh, public works comments was about two-way traffic around, which again, staff planning staff comment is maybe look at one way around so we're trying to again balance mm. some of the comments and what but we it, think is from an engineering standpoint mm. uh, we think it's important to have that 25 feet with with the use all right i'm going to back up so the the use of the building so would there possibly be uh so gas oil no paint no sprayed wash you know how people like to wash the concrete and that's going to go into the system how can you be sure of that if you're going to well, well we're not going to have, have oil you um, mentioned the well, just a traditional uh yeah if someone adds a quart of oil to their their vehicle like yeah like that'd be hard to <laughs> no. i guess i'm asking because you uh, alluded to but possibly I, uh the spilling of a five gallon tank of uh Kerosene, I think you said. Yeah, I say, yeah, diesel fuel. Diesel fuel. Someone tips over. Yeah, I, it was just an example. If you know there's a known something. That's if they tell you. Yeah. Well, we've been there before. Yeah. In, in theory, everyone signs, a, you know, yes, in theory. It's a very challenging. You try to limit it as best you can and then hope that you have honest tenants that so do you have those drainage holes in the middle of each of the? No. Yeah. Yeah. How about hazardous material? No hazardous materials. We put a note. You don't have a. You don't have a fertilizers. You don't have a herbicide. None of that will be allowed on site. Gulp. Oh. <clears throat> right. There's so a again, a, least... a, a contractor that's doing uh, yard work. He's not going to have any of that on there. It'll be in their lease that they're not allowed to have any hazardous materials um, on site. So again, it's a it's a challenging thing to uh, monitor and enforce. Yeah. Um, but I'll be able to, you know, I both know how that works. Can we? Can we? Uh, this is a question for the staff. Can we require signage? Like, let's say, uh, you know, don't flush uh, dirty rags or whatever down toilets or, or pour things down sinks. And can we require things like that? You know, that that's more of a, a zoning um, issue. I mean, what you're talking about here in terms of the uses inside the building are not necessarily regulated activities. I mean, if if there is a spill that actually impacts the wetland, then you've got enforcement capability. Um, but but you can't you know let your imagination run wild and condition a permit based on that. Yeah. How about are you planning on using salt in this parking area? Yeah. I would say no, but I don't. Um, I, I'm guessing there's standard language that maybe staff has regarding salt usage because we both know that hydrodynamic separators do not take out salt and underground storage does not take out salt so it goes through the system and down into the wetlands i would say if it gets into the underground infiltration system it's gonna it's gonna 
it's going to help as opposed to draining directly to the well. Well, yeah. So that doesn't um, mean it takes it out. I can, why don't I speak to salt use uh, next All right. two weeks? For, for the record, are the drainage calculations in the record somewhere? They've been submitted, so I believe they are, yes. Sometimes in the in the ancient history, we used to see all those. Remember, they ran those. We, I, I don't need to. I just want to make I sure. Stop sending those to you. Just and want to just make sure the narrative. But yes, we do have. And also, to I feel uh, particularly compelled to read the letter from the adjacent property owner into the record. I just feel more comfortable. Yeah, it would be a refresher because I just when did I get it today? I think just right. When we got. So I would um, I would. Be happy to listen to it and I can catch every I'm happy to read it every right. part of it. Uh, this is a uh, an email from Tim Alaska to Tabitha Parkin. Uh, Tabitha, hi, this is Tim Talaska. Thanks for speaking with me concerning the upcoming wetland meeting on 1-11-2023 in regard to Inland Wetland 22-090 Flanders Road, pin blah, blah, blah. I will not be able to attend the public meeting, but I want to submit my comments and concerns for the record. My main concern is the 175 foot extension of the pipe to the existing 24 inch pipe going under Flanders Road. My property is Mystic Business Park 800 Flanders Road, and the existing 24-inch pipe that goes under Flanders Road picks up water and runoff from my property. So far, there have not been any problems with the pipe going under Flanders Road becoming choked off from too high of a flow rate. But I recall that we did have to evaluate this water flow when I did my development. And at the time, there were comments that I might may be responsible for digging up the 24, the existing 24 inch pipe and installing a larger di diameter pipe due to the perceived higher flow rate caused by additional runoff from my buildings and parking areas. We monitored this flow after many substantial storms <laughs> and determined that the existing pipe was still of adequate size, so no upsizing of the existing pipe was required. The flow rate that is possible through the pipe before it becomes choked and begins to back up is determined by a variety of factors, including the pipe diameter, pitch, roughness, and overall length. When the length is increased, additional flow resistance is caused by the added pipe friction. Currently, the existing pipe discharges into an open channel, so there is no significant resistance to the flow. However, when you add 175 feet of additional pipe to the existing approximately 60 feet of pipe, you now have increased the pipe length by a factor of four. There is a basic pipe flow equation that uses known friction coefficients, Moody pipe flow charts, that can show how much the extra pipe length will decrease the flow capacity of the pipe. The wetland plan did not have the proposed pipe slopes, so it, I cannot calculate this, but there will be indeed some restriction if the existing pipe is of the same 24 inch diameter. My concern is whether or not this restriction in flow was already considered and if the 24 inch pipe is adequate versus perhaps a larger pipe like 30 inches. If the proposed pipe is not adequate, then a lot a large area on my property, which was considered to be a vernal pool, would pond up and flood onto the surrounding wetland during a severe storm. Sincerely, Tim Tylaska, PhD, PE. Thank you, Eunice. One other question. What's the roof material? That would be metal. Metal, metal, metal roof. roof. Yeah. Is it peaked? Or uh, that would be a peak. Yeah, it will be typically the the metal uh, metal buildings are four pitch or six pitch at the max, mm -hmm. so relatively flat. But, mm -hmm. I mean, a four pitch. It's still. Yeah. Pretty decent. 
The building sounds very similar to the ones across the street. Yeah, it's a similar, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, similar type of use and similar. Uh, they have those <laughs> bays, and then everybody they use the inside at, for work, and then they park right in front of the bays. Yeah, I think there's a. I, I mean, I don't know specifically what the uses are, but I think they probably uh, are, are a variety of yeah, different yeah. uses there. And I think each individual, you know. You have the ability to to be able to store some stuff and 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 have some office space too. Could I ask one more question? I know it's off site, um, but would it be possible to get some sort of uh, GIS or any kind of representation of the larger wetland that is on the adjacent property to this? Yeah, that's a little. The adjacent meaning on oh, the one there, west side, as opposed yes, to yes. Okay. Yes. right now. Yeah. Sorry, no, yeah. the west side. That's a big wetland. Yeah. yeah, just just so we have it in the record and we can document its extent. Thanks. So I would say right off that losing that road to building two and moving that pipe back as far as feasibly possible, it's going to uh, improve your chances. Because okay. it's not often that we pipe water courses, yeah. rare. So whatever you can do is going to, is going to be in your favor. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see if we have a gentleman here. I don't know if you want to speak. Well, maybe I could just ask a couple of questions. Absolutely. I think you have to ask the commission. Let's state your name and address, please. Uh, Bruce Avery, uh, Spicer Avenue in Nowhere. Um, so, how many square feet is left of? Surface road and parking lot. You said 12,000 got eliminated? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure that I have that number exactly. I'm going to have to get that number for next time, but I think it's around 20,000 square feet, but don't um, up, have paving. So could you just show us again where the where the runoff from building two goes? Like, so track it a little bit. I'm, I'm speaking loud enough. Uh, so all the runoff for building two uh, basically goes towards Flanders Road, gets captured by uh, or runs across a filter strip into a infiltration trench, runs to a catch basin, uh, then a separator, and then into the underground storage area, and then uh, to the plunge pool, which is at the head of the uh, right. wetland as it widens. Yeah. And then did you say that that plunge pool drains from a four inch pipe? No. Uh, so the four inch pipe is inside of, well, there's a couple different four inch pipes. So the four inch pipe inside the infil infiltration trench and then the control structure, uh, I'm going to have to just double check. Uh, proposed outlet structure two is the one that's controlling the flow from building two area. And that is a four inch orifice that controls the flow from building two and the pavement uh, surrounding building two. Okay, and then these bays in the buildings are going to be 30 by 30. Can you speak up so we can all hear you? 
the, the bays and the buildings are going to be 30 by 30. Uh, so building two is currently 30 by 75 feet. So most likely uh, they'll be split into three units that are 25 feet by 30 feet. Uh, most likely with one garage door in the center of that 25 foot span. So the three garage doors on that 75 foot face. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Just a comment from staff. Yeah. Um, just a comment to remind everyone that we received these plans, these revised plans yesterday, and no staff was um, able to review anything. So my notes that are in the packets are from the previous set of plans. Right. So, so we're going to continue. We to continue anyway. Continue the hearing open until what's the date? The twenty fifth is the next meeting. Is that what you're targeting? Because you could also have time to go to the one in February. Yes. Twenty fifth. We would like to come back for the twenty fifth to provide the soil scientist testimony yep. and then uh, take to heart your. Uh, hmm your comments oh, about building two and uh, access to that side of the road. Okay, uh, we need a motion to do that. So moved, make a motion to keep the public hearing open for zero Flanders Road. Uh, and continue it to January, continue it to January 25th. Second it. We have a second? Second it. Comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions, so we're done. Thank you. Give you something to think about. I know. Well, <laughs> I've done a lot of thinking the last couple of days. <laughs> Friday. Pass that back over. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. Well, you want to be here? Oh. There's no exhibits. Can I just stand on my other one? Can you stand on that? I can do that. I don't need all of them. You just want the red one or colored one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. That must take something to scan those. What's that? That scan must take scanner. a special machine to scan those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they have these. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no <one. laughs> What's next? You ready to move on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, public communications. Nothing. No. no. No, I don't see anyone. Approval of the minutes of December 14th. Make a motion to move the minutes of December 14th, 2022. I'm not going to second. You're not going to say anything? No, I'm going to abstain. Oh, why? Second. A second. I couldn't All right. Comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Whoops, I forgot. Abstain. Barbara was going to abstain because she couldn't read on the new phone, but she forgot to abstain. So. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. We don't have any new applications that I know of. We do not. Yeah. Okay. The Oak Barn, 35 Campbell Road. That is not ready tonight? Not ready. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. Notice the violation. I'm just going to. There we go. All right. So let me just um, set the background. It was in your packet. Um, this this lot, uh, 193 um, Godfrey Road, was created um, in the early 2000s. It had a wetland permit to do so and then subdivision approval. Uh, it was a five lot subdivision. This is the last lot to be developed. Um, the, the builder had uh, given me um, a site plan for the house they intended to build to make sure it was consistent with the wetland permit, and it was. Um, oops, I need to promote the property owner. Um, Can we look at this? Is, where is this? This is on Godfrey Road. It's Old Mystic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah a long time. 
Yeah. How much time I'm going. Let's see if you can get her. Okay. Yeah. Um. It, I mean, it was 2002 for whoever was on the on the agency at that point, right? <laughs> Most of you, right? Um. So, so building is under construction. Years ago, scary. Yeah, a building is under construction um, per the approved site plan, which meets the permit. Um, I got a call in late December that there was some tree removal being done um, in the regulated area and possibly in the wetland. Um, so I, I, I inspected. Um, there are there were some trees that were cut. The stumps have not been removed, and there were pictures in your packet that showing that. Um, and so I've contacted the, the property owner um, and suggested they attend tonight, issued a notice of violation, again, something in your packet, which is not at the level of a, a correction order or cease and desist order. Okay, so if you are not satisfied with the conversation, that's another step you can take in enforcement. But at this point, just a notice of violation that you're not consistent with your permit. Um, suggested that they start to look at a restoration plan. Oh. Um, and so um, the property owner is here tonight um, and they can kind of go over, you know, what happened and um, explain what what they're thinking in terms of remediation. So, Irene, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and unmute and you can address the uh, the agency. Unmute. There you go. OK, good evening. Uh, my name is William Sirica. I Irene's husband. Uh, I guess uh, what, what had happened prior to anything actually being built, uh, I, there were several trees that we thought were, were leaning towards the proposed site of the home. So I took action by taking several trees down, thinking I was within the wetland or the buffer zone, which obviously I was wrong. And uh, the trees came down, uh, we removed the wood, uh, there's still a little bit of brush still left there. I would like to propose if I could, again, I'm sorry about that, but to remove the brush, but not that's nothing in the wetland area, but by not in the buffer zone, but by the buffer zone. And maybe if I could talk with my builder and, and get a, a, a planting plan for, for other, to plant other trees that are common in this area, if, if I could propose that. So I'm going to just pull out a plan for you guys. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a little bit so much. here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the control then. Uh, all. Oh. Okay. All right. So this is a rear lot. You can't see it from the road. So the mm -hmm. the, the driveway is a common driveway that comes up here. This is the house that's under construction. Um, in 2002, you had a 50 foot upland review area and that's, that's what's shown on here. Um, there is a pocket wetland right here. Um, there are other wetlands on the, on the subdivision site, but, but this is the one that's um, on this property. So, so the tree removals were you know, in between the, the 50 foot line and, and the wetland edge um, you know, down in here. Mm -hmm. um, again, no stumps were removed. It was just the trees that were cut. It looked like process for firewood with the tops left there. Mm -hmm. All right. Is how it many? useful to know how many trees? Yeah, yeah how many? I, uh, I didn't count them, but five, maybe six? Yes, yes, ma'am. And DBH. Oh, DBH, yeah, DBH, yep. yep. Wow. They were a decent sized tree, yeah. Uh, I'd like to see the the plan of restoration and uh, not something with uh, 12 inch tall trees. Okay, so okay, so yeah. for the next meeting, then perhaps you all can I can get you a copy of your plan if you like, and you can work with your builder to um, to to do a planting plan that they can review. That yes, ma'am. Excellent. And the they will be planted in the area where he took them out. Yes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, in the Upland Review area. Yeah. That's right. And okay. You said the native. Right, native yes. plants, yes. absolutely. Yep. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Very good. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so I'll be in touch with you folks um, tomorrow so I can get you the plan and um, get working on it. Okay, thank you. 
Thanks, Deb. Thank Great. Open. Here we go. Yeah. Pretty good, huh? Make sure he understands. We're not, not putting in nope. this stuff. Nope, we'll get dimensions on them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're talking. Yep. Absolutely. Otherwise, you know, we'll all be in the ground before these things become uh, yep. enough to matter. Oh, yep. well, we will anyway. Well, but... anyway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They might know yeah. why he cut the okay. Maybe not. Maybe not all of them. <laughs> all right. Collection of officers. Who wants it? <laughs> you got it. Dave. Anybody want to take on our relation? I'll, I'll hang in. Same. One year, it's just for one year, right? One year. Yeah. yeah. Are we all getting reappointed, by the way? There were a lot of people that were. I did that. I know, but. Yes. I'm just checking with the town council yes. because they asked a lot of people to. Anybody else want to leave? Just That's saying. Yeah. yeah. Not here. No. I just am missions. asking. I'm seriously no, asking. No, correct. No, that he's correct. Wetland agency uh, reappointments, no issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll make a motion to uh, keep the same. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, not yet. <laughs> Same slate of officers, and uh, and make a motion that we approve that slate. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> <Not me. laughs> Don't oppose. <laughs> All right. All right. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Dave, for continuing. To do this, oh, yes, yeah. Dave. Thank you. Right. Your right. your presence. We should bribe your wife. <laughs> yes. Oh. We sorely miss you when you're not here. You can still travel though, if you want to. We're going to Florida, so I won't be here the first meeting in February. Okay, that's good. Good. Brad. But I will be here for the second. But you'll be here next time. I will be here next time. Okay. You can zoom it. Oh. Right. <laughs> no. You have anything, Deb? Um, I do not. Yeah. All right. How about you, Tabitha? You have anything? Tabitha, okay. nice job on that. I just want to say on the stuff that you sent to us and the blah, 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 it was very thorough and I really appreciated it. I can say that outside the public hearing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're not saying anything about the application. No. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Uh, I, I oppose. You're opposed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Shall we off recording? Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking first. I'm like, can we go? Right. Okay, wait a minute. All right. So, good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.